Hello and welcome. Welcome, children of God, wherever you are tuned in from. Welcome, all people of God, wherever you are tuned in from, all over the world. We thank God for this beautiful day. We thank each one of you who have taken time to tune into this live stream service. May you receive all that your heart desires. God bless you and may you never remain the same as you join us in this service. May you receive all that your heart desires in Jesus' name. It's my prayer that you are being blessed. Let us pray and give thanks to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. This wonderful day that you have set for us to worship you, Jehovah. Father, I thank you for all those people who have taken time to tune in this stream service. Father, we know that your word says that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst. Father, I believe that we are gathered more than two or three in this stream service. Father, I pray that let your presence be felt. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for guiding us and keeping us all week long, Jehovah. We know that without you we are nothing, Jehovah. Father, we come to you this day and we thank you for the prayers and the wars that you have fought for us, Jehovah. I thank you for all the prayers that you have answered on our behalf, Father. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I pray for healing and breakthroughs and all that is troubling your people around the world, Jehovah. I pray all the strongholds in their lives. May your power step in and do mighty and wonderful things, Jehovah, in our lives, Father. Father, as we continue praying for one another, it is my prayer that you provide for those that are in need. I pray that you touch your people wherever they are. Touch all those that are in need. Feed those that are hungry. Comfort all those that are sorrowing in Jehovah. And heal those that are sick. And bring those that are far from you so that they can be close to you, Jehovah. Hallelujah. Father, I also pray that it, you your presence be felt. Father, let your angels protect us. Father, I release all your people from bondage and I speak freedom in their lives. I command all chains to be broken in Jesus' name, Jehovah. May the Holy Spirit give us the strength as we start this service until we finish, Father. Father, we give you the, all the honor and the glory and all the praise that you deserve. Father, also use me as a vessel. Anoint me to be your mouthpiece, Jehovah. And everything that we share today, when it is all said and done, you get all the glory and the honor. And in Jesus' name I pray. And all the people of God, wherever you are, shout hallelujah and say amen, amen. Well, welcome again and thanks for joining us in this service. We are going to share a word of God. For the word of God, Hebrews uh, 4, 12 says that, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword. The word of God pierces, pierces even to the division of soul and spirit. And it penetrates, it's, it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. The word of God can be used as a sword to defeat all the schemes of the devil, children of God. We need it in our lives every day. And we, at Dynamic International Ministries, we don't take it literally. We honestly thank you for letting us be part of your, your day so that we can share the word of God together. Despite all the changes in your lives, situations may change in your lives, but one thing that will never change is the powerful word and the promises of God's word. That is why I keep on holding on to it. 
I want you to be encouraged as you listen to today's message. It is definitely going to be a blessing and an eye opener for your life. Children of God, we need the word of God. Well, today I'm going to share word of God and I will be preaching from the book of John. I will be preaching from the book of John chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. And my title message will be why we must be born again or why we need to be saved, children of God. We need to be born again. John chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 7. And the word of God says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is a Spirit. Hallelujah. Do not marvel that I say it to you, you must be born again. And that is the word of God. Hallelujah. Children of God, that is a wonderful message, word of God. And why am I preaching this kind of message? It's because I know there are many like Nicodemus out there. I am preaching this message because I believe that there are many people in our midst who are like Nicodemus. They don't understand the word of God. I am sure there are many people in the world that have the same question as Nicodemus. The story we have just read states, it says that Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. He said, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Nicodemus was surprised. How can a man be born again when he's old? Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born again. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Because flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. Nicky had a problem. He had a problem. And the word born again literally means born from above. Nicodemus had a, a need. He needed to be helped. He needed a change of his heart. He needed a spiritual transformation. He needed a new birth. Children of God, being born again is an act of God whereby eternal life is imparted to the persons who believe. Like many of us, like many of us who are like Nicodemus, we are here. We see Nikki was a very knowledgeable person. Nikki understood the word of God and he kept it to date. Nikki knew the Bible, but in spite of all his knowledge about the scripture and his understanding of the word of God, he came looking for Jesus. He came looking for some answers to the questions that had been bothering him for a very long time. Nicodemus was in a situation that needed only Jesus to deal with it. Nicodemus followed Jesus and despite his knowledge he, uh, he had a lot of knowledge about the Bible and the Word of God. He knew about the teachings, but he noticed one thing that was different from Jesus from the other teachers. Nicodemus realized that nobody could say the things that Jesus was saying unless they were sent by God. 
Nicodemus realized that nobody could do the things that Jesus was doing unless he was sent by God. Nicodemus realized that nobody could walk the way Jesus was walking unless they were sent by God. So he said to Jesus, I know you are a teacher sent by God, for no man could do the things that you are doing except God be with him. Tell me how can these things be? Jesus looked at Nicodemus and said these words, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Jesus is talking about being transformed. And this transformation that Jesus was talking about was not a physical transformation as Nicodemus interpreted it. It was not physical transformation, but a spiritual change that takes place in our lives. We need to stop trusting ourselves so that we can trust in God. We need spiritual transformation and we must be born again. We need to be strong in the spirit so that we can be able to defeat the devil in the spiritual warfare. We are all dead in sin, and we must repent and accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior so that we can get to the kingdom of God. Because the Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, he says that, he says that, and you he made, you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. He also says to the Romans, Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Children of God. We are all sinners and we are all spiritually dead. But when we receive spiritual life through faith in Christ, the Bible calls it a new birth. We are new creatures in Christ. Only those who are born again have their sins forgiven. And they create a relationship with God. Because sin is an act of rebellion against God. Because sin brings death, premature death. Sin brings physical suffering. Sin brings spiritual death. Sin brings eternal death. So to be born again is to confess and come out of your sin and accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. If you live in sin, it's as if you are dead spiritually, period. Paul also tells us in Ephesians uh, chapter two, verse eight to nine. Therefore it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So when one, when one is saved, he or she has been born again, spiritually renewed, and is a new child of God, a new creature. So you become a child of God. Trusting in Jesus Christ, the one who paid the penalty of sin when he died on the cross. You become connected. That means to be born again, th there is something that changes in your life. Christ is a new creation. You become a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come in you. You are a new person. So we all need to be born again, children of God. There is no question about it. Jesus is very keen on his preachings. And he says that we all need to be born again so that we can see the kingdom of God. There is no option. It's either you are born again or you are not. This verse we just read, it's one of the most important sections of the scriptures in the Bible. I like it. Through this, we are going to discover what Jesus means. We will also look at the benefits of being born again. And this will help you and those who are doubters, those who are not born again, so that they can accept Jesus Christ and be born again.
for their own benefit. We are all required as Christians to preach the word to people who don't know God so that they can know what God has done. Mark chapter 16 verse 16 says that he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Hallelujah. That means that our duty is just to tell the people about the woodworks of God. Tell them the benefits of being close to Jesus, hoping to God. Tell the people what God has, is doing in your life since you got saved. Tell the people around you to turn and follow Jesus Christ as their personal savior so that whoever hears and accepts and gets baptized will be saved and whoever ignores that will be condemned. So our duty is just to preach the word of God. Tell the people, when somebody tells you he, he has been saved, or somebody tells you he's a Christian, it doesn't mean that they are born again. They are Christians who are not born again. They are Christians who, are, who don't know what, the, the, what being born again is. They are Christians who are missing aloud because they don't understand. They are like Nicodemus. You know some people, most people think that when they, they belong to a certain church, or when they, be, they, they think that when they attend a, a big, a mega church and they give their, give their tithes and offerings, they think that is a ticket to, to heaven. My brothers and my sisters, remember that just because you sing in a church choir, in a mega church, or you are a leader in the church, or you support the poor, or, or you give out to the needy, or you, you give a lot of uh, you know, money to the church, building, church, or anything, or you give donations, it's good when you do all that. But remember, it does not guarantee you, guarantee you an entry into the kingdom of God. It does not. It does not give you a ticket to heaven. It's, it's not a guarantee that you are going to heaven when you do all those things you do. It's good you do them. You must be born again. That is what Jesus is telling us. This conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus is a story. It's, one, it's probably one of the most chapters, most beneficial chapters in the Bible. This is one of those most important scriptures when you read. It, it gives you some information, some wisdom. But my number one scripture is the death and the burial and the resurrection. That is the most important one that I like. And then this one might be the, the third one. So I want to spend time with me and read. Read this scripture and digest this and see what you can get out of it. It will be very beneficial. It's a very interesting story in the Bible. You will learn a lot. Jesus is talking to a fellow named Nicodemus. And he's doing it at night. And why at night? Because Nicodemus is a religious leader. He is a Pharisee. He is, is a religious leader who is assumed to have it all together. Who is assumed to understand the scriptures. That's why he doesn't want anything to do with Jesus. Because he knows it all. The Pharisees knew everything. That's why they separated themselves from the cloud. Because they believed that they knew it all and they had it all together. I mean, they, they, they didn't want anything to do with Jesus. So that's why they separated themselves. So it really didn't bother them what, about what Jesus was saying. They never minded what Jesus was doing. But they always looked for some little mistakes so that they could accuse Jesus for what he was doing. They did not want to be associated with Jesus. And that's why Nick sneaks to Jesus at night. He is not only a Pharisee, but he is also a religious leader. So 
He comes to Jesus at night as a leader because he didn't want people to see him. He didn't want to, people to know that he, he had anything to do with the Savior. He didn't want people to know that he had anything with this man named Jesus. Jesus was busy doing his thing. He was preaching. He was teaching. And a lot of people following him. People are being healed everywhere he was going. The lame were walking. The dead were being raised. The deaf were given I mean, a sight. The blind were given sight that the deaf could hear. A lot of miracles were going on. Jesus is doing all that he has been doing. But there were a lot of opposition because the Pharisees and the teachers did not agree with his teaching. And they did not respect him. So they had a lot of opposition to the Messiah. The Pharisees they don't like him. So that's why Nick, they did not like what Jesus was doing. But then inside, they never liked Jesus' teaching, but they, they understood that this man had something that was very astonishing. He had, there was, he, he had a message that had something that was, uh, you know, making people get saved, healed. So he had a connection. That is what was surprising them. So they were bothered. But the deep in their heart, they knew that this man, this man Jesus, was different from them. And that's why when you have the anointing of God, when you have the anointing of God working in you, even if people don't like you, just preach the word of God. And one day they will start digesting your messages and they will find that something inside your messages was from God. So Nicodemus sneaks at night to talk to Jesus and tells him that in, in verse 2 he says, in verse 2 he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher coming from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with you. That's what Nicodemus says. In other words, he tells Jesus that, Rabbi, even if, even if in public we don't agree with you, but what you are doing, but the deep inside, we know that you are a teacher. And for sure, for sure, Rabbi, we know that nobody can do the things that you are doing unless they are from God. So in other words, we've been watching you. We've been watching you before miracles. You are sure from God. And before he says anything further, Jesus interjects and tells him, Nicodemus, Nicodemus, I am telling you, Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Stop all these things you're talking about. The issue here is to be born again. I don't know why Jesus answered with that kind of answer. I don't know, but it makes a lot of sense. Surprisingly, Jesus tells Nicodemus, he tells him three, three, years, three times about being born again. Jesus says, in their conversation, Jesus says that unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then, he also says it, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He wants to make it straight and clear. Then he also says, then he uses it again, that which is born of the flesh, 
is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we see Jesus is trying to drive a point. And then he says, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. He's driving a point. So there's something unique about being born again, children of God. That's why when I was looking at this scripture, I discovered that there is something that Jesus was trying, driving out. And I think it's going to help you and me. And it's going to help other people in the world. Whoever would listen to this message. We all need to be born again because it will help us be strong in the spirit. And we would be strong in spiritual warfare. We will be able to defeat the devil in the spirit. If you are attending, if you are attending some church and you are an active member in any church or in any ministry and you are not born again, then there is something wrong with the people who are your spiritual leaders or your spiritual mentors. There's something wrong. You need to be born again. It is crystal clear that if you are not born again, you cannot make it into the kingdom of God. There's no shortcut. No way. Jesus doesn't let Nicodemus tell him what, what he came to tell him. He didn't even listen. He says, Nikki, you must be born again. Stop what you are telling me. Stop all those stories. You must be born again. It is not an option. It is a requirement to enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, it is not negotiable. You must be born again. Or else you don't see the kingdom of God. Let's not negotiate. I remember last week I told you that there are not many roads to heaven. Don't be cheated. Jesus is the only way. He says, I'm the way, the truth. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. That is Jesus Christ talking, children of God. Jesus says that if you want to come to heaven, you, in other words, you must go by him then you must be connected. You must be born again. You must accept him as your personal savior. You must be born again. Most people don't, don't understand this concept. Most people that think when they sing in the choir, if they go to church, if they pay their tithes and offerings, if they, people think that if they serve in leadership in church, if they, they think that if they help the poor, Wrong misconception, my friend. You can do all those things. It's okay. But remember, the kingdom of God, you will never see it. You can do all those things, but it's still, and still go to hell. It's so sad. Most people think that uh, attending church will not get you to heaven. My dear brothers and sisters, you have to be born again. You must be born again in order to get to heaven. This is very important. You cannot confront the devil unless you are born again. You cannot. You cannot attack the devil. Because once you are not born again, you belong to the devil. Most people make mistakes of confronting the devil while they are still not born again. And that's wrong. You know, if you are not born again and anything happens today, unfortunately, you will go to hell. There's nothing we can do to help you if you left today without being born again. We can't pray over and change the situation. It is your own life and it is up to you. Remember, if you died today and you're brought to church in a big casket, expensive casket, and a big limousine, it's not going to change God's mind. Children of God, even if we pray from morning to evening, it's not going to change God's mind. You have time. 
this is the time. You need to change. We can't pray to bring you back. We can't pray to change God's mind. When you have the opportunity to do it, you need to do it, children of God. It's your life. Change or perish. You must be born again and have a personal relationship with God. I don't want you to have double standard. Don't have a, a relationship with me if you are far from God. You need Jesus better than you need me. You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Only you can make that decision. It's you and be born again. There's no question about the debating, arguing. And the reality is that, that there are so many churches coming up, mushrooming up everywhere in the communities. People are planting churches, but they don't have an, any impact on the people. They don't tell them about this. They don't tell them about being born again. They are just receiving their, they are not telling them about salvation. Churches are just, they are just, I mean, they're concerned about what kind of money they receive from these people. They are not changing people's lives. We need to tell people the truth. We need to tell them about what is happening. We must be, we must be the salt of the earth. We are called to be the salt of the earth so that we can impact the people. Tell them the truth. That's why we are called to be the salt of the earth. Tell the people the truth. And the salt is the change agent. We are supposed to change the people. We are supposed to be the changing agent. We are a seasoning. We are supposed to pull the paste out of the people. We are a catalyst. You know, salt is a catalyst. It's a preservative. We are preservatives. So we are supposed to be a preservative of truth. Tell the people the truth. We need to preserve the truth. We are all called to be witnesses and share the gospel to the people so that they can get saved and be born again. We are all called to help people be born again. We need to help out all the people of God so that they can connect with Jesus. We need to tell all the people who surround us about the good things that God is doing to our lives. Tell the people about the benefits of being born again so, so that we don't be like Nicodemus. So Nicodemus goes to Jesus at night and tells him, he tells him, what can I do? Jesus said, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If we read John, we read John chapter 3, verse 1 to 7, he said the kingdom of God, he's talking about the kingdom of God. He says, this is very important, he says that this is very, very important, that you have to be born again. We need to be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. We need to try to understand. We need to try to understand how we need to live in the spiritual warfare. We all need to be born again, children of God. There's no question about it. We can't defeat the devil unless we are born again. And one important aspect of being born again is to help you deeply understand how spiritual realm works. This is the area where the devil prays from. The devil doesn't want people to know and understand the concept of spiritual warfare. If you have not been born again, you cannot see the things of the spirit. It takes time for God to open your eyes and see how he operates in the spirit. So you must be born again. There are a lot of things happening in the spirit. You must create that relationship so that you can open your spiritual eyes and start seeing in the spirit. There's no way you can see things if you are not been born again. You are still in the dark if you are not been born again. You will be wasting your time convincing people about 
how to live, how spiritual truth, if they are not born again. Convince them, tell them the goodness of God. Tell them that they can never get to heaven unless they are born again. Before you teach them the word of God, before you teach them about receiving the goodness about, of, of you know, the earthly things, they must be born again. You'll be talking about the good news. And it's not good news to them because they are not born again. It can only be good news if they understand who, the, who is the, the source of the good news. They need to understand the Holy Spirit. They can't see the Holy Spirit unless they are born again. God has to open their eyes to see what you are, they are seeing, what you need to see in the Spirit. You tell people about paying their tithes and offerings. And you tell them the scriptures. But you need to tell them first to have that relationship. They will never be able to be blessed and understand since they are not born again. Because they are not connected. You'll be telling them about fasting, praying, about God answering prayers. It will not make sense. They cannot see it unless they are born again, children of God. God opens their eyes. It's my prayer that God opens your eyes. God says, it's here. You cannot see the kingdom of God. I mean, you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. It's like being blind if you are not born again. You need spiritual eyes first by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior. You must be born again. So then Nicodemus says, but the rabbi, how? How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he go enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Nicodemus said to him, how can I be born again? How? Is it possible? How can I go back to my mother's womb? <laughs> Many people like Nicodemus. How is that possible, for Jesus? Rabbi, how can that happen? Now you see, Nicodemus is approaching this issue from a physical point of view. That is why it's very important to understand spiritual operations, how it works, how things work in the spirit. Because this, this veil on Nicodemus asks God, how can I go back into my mother's womb to be born again and come out flesh? How? Is that possible, Jesus? Nicodemus is trying to understand spiritual truths and yet he is blind. He is not born again. He is spiritually blind. So he must be born again. Jesus saw him in the spirit. He was blind. He never knew anything in the spirit. Jesus was operating in the spirit, but Nicodemus was operating physical. He had the physical perspective, the flesh. The body was controlling him. And that is not only happening to Nicodemus, but it's happening to many of you. And that's the most mistake people make in trying to understand God from a carnal perspective. You need to understand God from the spirit. But look what Jesus says. Look what Jesus said in verse. Uh, Jesus says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, spirit, he cannot would what? Enter the kingdom of God. So you need to be born in the spirit. Jesus says that if you want to see the kingdom of God, and enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again. You have to be born again. Jesus is saying that you must be born again. Spiritually. He says that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born 
of the spirit is spirit. So Jesus tells us, tells Nikki that the two forms of path is physically and flesh. You've been born, born free, uh, many physically, but now you need to be born spiritually. That's what he's saying. There has to be a time in your life where you accept Jesus Christ to come and dwell inside you and make you a new creature, make you a new person. You need to, in one day, you must. Jesus is trying to give clarity about this because he says that in order to be a child of God and see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. There's no question. You can never see God with your naked eyes. You must be in the spirit. And that will en enable you to enter the kingdom of God. But first, you must be born again. Now, we go back to the same issue. And once you are born again, you will have several benefits. A lot of benefits. Because I know most people will be asking, what are the benefits? What are the benefits? In most cases, even, even when you go to a job interview, what are the benefits? Are the benefits more than wages? When you are born again, there are a lot of benefits. There are many benefits of being born again. You become a child of God. The ultimate benefit is is you become a child of God and you don't go to hell. And you have a title to heaven. There is so much more to salvation. You become a child of God. You don't go to hell. And then you have peace with God. When you are born again, peace is brought to, to you. Jesus Christ is a great peacemaker. He is the mediator between God and man. Once you are connected with him, you will never miss once you pray through his name. Christ is the author and the finisher and is the principal agent of this access to God. So in order to access this God, you need to know Jesus. Because through him we have hope. Our hope is for the future of glory. We need to have that hope in Christ. Hallelujah. And finally, we will have eternal life once we are born again. You have an everlasting life. John 3, verse 16. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the Lord, of the begotten son of God. Hallelujah. So if we are born again, we will not be condemned. That's what the Bible is saying. Some of you are living in the age of being condemned. Or you are living in an age of being punished. But once you are born again, you are spared, children of God. You are covered in the blood and you are not being punished. The blood of Jesus covers you and it clears all your sins. It makes you a new creature, and it makes you as white as snow, and wipes away all your sins. I don't know what you have been doing. I don't know what you need. I don't know what kind of sin you have committed. I don't know what kind of life you have lived. But once you get born again, the blood of Jesus will wipe away all your sins. Hallelujah. And you become a new creature in the eyes of God. So today I ask you to make that decision, to make and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and begin having that relationship that will last for eternity and heaven will not be the same. Remember, 
you will be right in a relationship with God once you accept him. You will get all the answers to your deepest needs. You will get all the privileges of, of direct access to the presence of God. You will have the confidence of a secure future with Christ. Hallelujah. And then you are a child of God. You are a sibling of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will live inside of you. Then you have a sinless spiritual, you know, you, you, you become a new creature. And you'll be filled with eternal life. And you will be loved unconditionally. My brother, my sister, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you need to do it right now. If you are not born again, you are making a big mistake. You must be born again spiritually. If that is you <laughs> who have not done that, you need to do it right now. You need to make that the decision. It will help you understand how God operates. And you will start enjoying the benefits that it comes with it. You come to church, you give tithes and offerings. You receive the Holy Communion. But you have never been born again. It will be sad, very embarrassing, if you are in the forefront of the church and today you die and you go to hell because you miss that chance. Children of God, you need to accept Jesus Christ and build that personal, personal relationship with him. Make that decision today. It's my prayer. I am going to give you a chance to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. I am praying it is my prayer. Remember that no one gets to heaven by being a good person. Nicodemus had devoted his life to being a good person. He was trying to live up to the standards that his religion had told him. Children of God, religion will not get you to heaven. Nick kept all that was required by his religion, but still Jesus told him something different. Nicodemus realized that Jesus had a different perspective of going to heaven. Nick thought that by being a good kid, then you can get to heaven. No, 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 no. But Jesus told him, no, 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 no. No one can go get to heaven by being good because no one can ever be good enough. You are going to have to go to heaven if only you be born again. Jesus was very clear. I want you to repeat these words and you'll be saved. And the Holy Spirit will take charge in you. And that is what we call being born again. Just say these words. This prayer, all you need is just confess and connect yourself. Remember Paul puts it very clear in Romans 10, 9. He says that if you declare with your mouth, if you declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be born again. Just confess and say these words after me. Hallelujah. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask you for forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins and you rose from the dead, Jehovah. Father, I now turn from my sins and all my wicked ways. Father, I now invite you to come into my heart and my life, hallelujah, and make me a new creature. From now on, Father, I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and the Savior. Hallelujah. So help me, God. Amen and amen. Children of God, congratulations. Congratulations for the bold step you have taken. I assure you, you have booked yourself a spot in eternal life. Keep reading the word of God and pray. You will see something happening in your life. Right now, the angels are celebrating in heaven. They are celebrating for that bold step that you have taken. Because the angels, heaven comes to a standstill when one soul is saved. God bless you.
God bless you and I keep you safe. Let me say a word, a blessing to all you and your families. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the new souls that have been saved into your kingdom, Jehovah. Father, I pray that you bless them and give them, oh, hallelujah, give them protection. Give them protection with their immediate families, Father. Give the new converts the wisdom to draw more close to you, Jehovah, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the word we have shared today, Jehovah. Father, I ask that you give us the strength to understand and read your word. For we know the word, your word has wisdom. We need to use it and apply it to our lives, Jehovah. We want to have the Holy Spirit to control our lives, Jehovah. Father, you assured us that the Holy Spirit will be our guide. Hallelujah. And your word says that we need the Holy Spirit in our lives in order to give us direction in everything that we do. We need to be reminded of what happened, Jehovah. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to live according to God's will. Hallelujah, Jehovah. Teach us to read and understand your word, Father. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I pray for all the people in the world, and especially all the people who tune into this service, Father. I pray for unity and the love, Father. Help us to act like you. Transform us so that we can become like you, Jehovah. Father, teach us your wisdom and the kindness, generosity, and the compassion, and the love. Hallelujah. Transform us so that we can be able to transform the communities that we live in, Jehovah. Help us to welcome into our lives those who are different and those who are not born again so that they can know you better, Father. Father, I thank you also for what you are doing for this ministry, Jehovah. We give you praise and honor as we believe that you have better things in store for us, Father. We thank you for our families, Jehovah. Father, I pray for the essential workers during this coronavirus. Protect them. May your mighty hand be with them, Jehovah. Be with the doctors, the nurses, the caregivers, all the emergency services, Father. Protect them. Give them the courage and the strength as they do the work, Jehovah. Father, we give you honor and glory. We thank you also for this service. We have seen your hand, Father. We pray that you be with us. Hallelujah. I cover all the people who joined. We thank you and give you the praise and the honor, Jehovah. I cover all your people with the blood of Jesus, wherever they are. May you receive all that your heart desires. May you never rub. May you never, uh, I mean, the diseases that come onto you, I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and give you glory and honor. Hallelujah. I thank you. Thank you, all the people of God. Thank you for being part of this ministry, Father. May all the doors that the devil has closed, may, be, may they be opened in Jesus' name, I pray. And all the people of God say, amen, wherever you are. Thank you, and God bless you. Hallelujah. I would also like to welcome you and be part of this ministry. If you have any concern or you need anything, please reach us. Check us on, uh, online at dynamicministriescharge.com. Or if you need anything, you can call us on 817-805-9020. God bless you. Till next time. <laughs>